uh, this is Charles Aro here, and today is going to be my first official how-to video on how to use After Effects. Now, this video is just going to help you understand the workspace and what the workspace has to offer and how to use it. So, when you open up After Effects, there are a couple key places to understand. This is your project area, your composition palette, and your timeline palette. These three areas are going to be the most crucial areas to understand. Um, your project area is where you store project files and compositions. Compositions are the actual files that you're working in. So let's create a composition. You want to click this icon right here. It says create a new composition. This gives you the ability to name whatever you want to call it. So we're going to call it how to video one. Now let's go ahead and fix that, that big O. All right. You can choose some of the presets they already have in there. Um, they have widescreen, they have square pixels, um, they have PAL, and they have NTSC. Uh, you can do a web banner for 68 by 60, different kinds they have, but you can also create a custom one that you want yourself. So if you know your own pixel size, you can create your own. But I'm just going to pick one for starters, and we're going to pick uh, widescreen. You can choose a pixel aspect. You can choose the pixel aspect ratio. Uh, I like to work with square, but there's other ones you can work with here. Uh, 0 .0, uh, 0 0.91, 1.21. You can even work in PAL, or you can work in HDV, DVC Pro. I'm just going to leave it the way it is and leave my frame rate at 29.97. Um, you can change your resolution at full or a quarter. Uh, this just lets you know when you're rendering. Uh, it makes it easier for After Effects to process what it's trying to process so that you can um, have a, a faster playback. Um, yeah, if you have it at a quarter, it's not going to look as pretty, but you can always change that later on. Uh, and then here in your duration, this is where you set how long you want your time frame to be. I like to set it for 30 seconds. This is frames, seconds, minutes, and hours. I like to set it at 30 seconds, and if I ever have to make anything new, I just make something new later on. And then just press OK, and here it is. There's my composition. It pops in right away. And so now we're going to drag in um, an item. You want to go to my desktop, bring in an actual image that I created in After Effects, and you can see here the icon of the image actually pops up in a little thumbnail, and it says the name, coming soon, JPEG, and the size. Um, and it, it shows up in your project file, so it's easy to find. So the next thing you want to do is now that we have a composition, well, how do we get the picture inside the composition? Well, it's great. You just click and drag the image either down here in your timeline or you can grab it and put it straight into the composition itself. So we'll just drag and drop it right there. And there you go. Now we have an image inside of our timeline. So the next thing we want to do is try to figure out how can we manipulate that? Well, up here in your toolbar, you have your selection tool your hand tool, your zoom tool, your camera tools, your uh, masking tools, which is rectangle tool and your pen tool. You got your type tool, your paintbrush tool, your clone stamp tool, your eraser tool, and the rotor brush, which is only available in Adobe After Effects CS5. So if you don't have CS5, I recommend getting it as soon as you can because rotoscoping is extremely fun and easy once you get the hang of it. It's a lot easier than keyframing. Okay, so now that we have it in here, um, let's say we want to get rid of half of it. You have all these cool little effects that you can use, um, like using the rectangle tool. You could choose to do the rectangle. If you click and hold this button, you could use rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse tool, polygon, or even star. I'm just going to stick with the rectangle tool. This is a masking tool that allows you to either A, get rid of pieces, or add pieces to an existing picture. So while selecting the layer, if I click and drag a box over top of the layer, you can see it's allowing me to keep whatever part of the image I want based on how big the box is. So let's say I want half, and then I just click out of it, boom, I just masked half of the picture. Let's go ahead and undo that. We want to go to edit, and then undo rectangle, or press command Z. Now I'm using a Mac. Okay, or just use the pen tool. If I select the layer, you can actually just start clicking away on the layer. And once you're done with your shape, you want to connect it, and then boom, it keeps all that I actually selected. 
Anything inside the shape, whether you're using the rectangle tool or the pen tool, is what it keeps. But you can always change that. I'll explain something like that later on in more deep uh, tutorials. And so now that we understand how we can do certain little masks on uh, a picture or a video or maybe even a text, um, what we want to do now is we can actually um, rotate it or scale it. Uh, the, the key ones you want to look at are position. When you click position, you can change something on its X and Y axis like so or you can actually just click the image and move it around with your cursor and you can set it where you want to go we could put it in the top left corner or the bottom right corner anywhere you want to go I'm just gonna undo that and keep it back in the middle as well as uh, scaling you can go here in the scale function which is down here and if you go to the left you're gonna make it smaller if you go to the right you're gonna make it bigger you can make it as big as you want uh, I think the, the biggest is 10,000. Yeah, that's the biggest. It's huge. Um, or if you want, you could just select the layer as well. Go to the top corner, click, hold shift, and you can scale it to proportion. If you let go of shift, you can scale it all weird and make it skinny, reverse it, make it look like a skinny banner. Now he looks like Radon from Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat! <laughs> Uh, see now it's backwards undo okay uh, opacity you can make it from 100% visible to 0% visible you can make it to 77% visible 47% visible 26% visible anything you wanted to do you can do and these are the simple effects that you can use in the transform palette or the transform tool for each layer that you create and so that's how you drag an item to your timeline and how you can actually manipulate that item to what you want it to be. Um, you can see the item in here and see all the different layers and how they stack up, where they stack up, when they stack up, and actually when they actually do what they're going to do. And I'll explain keyframing in later videos, but for now, uh, we're just going to keep it simple and just understanding the workspace and the workflow. Now, um, I haven't explained what this area is called this is your viewer this is where you actually see what's happening to your composition anytime you want to view something you just press spacebar and inside your composition right here it actually shows the animation now inside this animation there's nothing moving we don't have any motion graphics so you can't see much but in later tutorials you'll actually see it move around the timeline and the last thing i want to explain is the the toolbar all the way at the top of your screen where it says after effects file edit composition layer effect animation view window and help if you click a layer you can actually go up here and do all sorts of cool different things in composition we can add it to our render queue and actually export it you can go into layer and manipulate the layer you can go to transform you know flip it horizontally we'll undo that you can go into frame blending, you can go to time, we can make it longer, shorter, we can freeze it, all these different things in layers. You can go into effects, we can go to distort, we can go to key, uh, we can go to matte. Actually, I'll go ahead and put in one little effect for you, just because. We'll go to blur and we'll go to fast blur. Up here in your effects palette, it pops up and you can manipulate your effect as how you want it to look. And you can see, in the viewer how it changes it gives you a real-time preview so you don't have to worry about rendering it but if it's a video you'll get the real-time preview but if you want to see the entire video play with that effect then you will have to render it those are some of the side effects but it's okay but that's simple up here just gives you the ability to have fun and play with all the different settings that you want as well as in your effects palette that's automatically there when you start up after effects you can search for effects, we can search in blur, you can search in text, and you can find all the different effects that um, you know work with text, all these different cool things. Um, and so that's After Effects in a nutshell. I, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, anything you want to learn, please send me a message or send me an email at contact at charlesharo.com. I am more than willing to help you out with whatever you want to learn. And I would love to know what you want to learn. So for the future, I can implement that in my how-to videos. Thank you and have a good one.